Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first Musical Region A concert for spring 2021. I'm Barbara Podgorski, the Artistic and Executive Director here at Musical Region A. And Musical Region A, for those of you who don't know, means Music of Queens, <coughs> which is where our home base is. Uh, we are live here at the beautiful old church, uh, the Church in the Gardens in on Askan Avenue in Forest Hills, Queens, on this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, we originally planned to have this concert outdoors, uh, and we would have been so fortunate with the beautiful weather we're having today. Uh, but due to uh, COVID restrictions uh, that are still somewhat in place, it was a little bit difficult to do so. So today we're coming to you live with a little Q&A and demonstration and a pre-recorded performance by the Gamelon Orchestra that was going to come join us this season. We will have them, all of them, come play as the orchestra on our next season. So we're really excited. And we'll consider this a little preview of what you'll get to see in person next year. A little bit about Music of Region A Productions. Uh, we're in our 21st concert season. We started back in 2000. Um, I've been in charge of the group now for about 12 years, and it was founded by maestro David Close and his wife, Leanne Close. And the purpose of it was to bring fine music and musicians to underserved uh, places in our hometown of Queens, New York. Uh, and we have blossomed into this great big organization that not only provides you with great classical music concerts, but jazz concerts, uh, concerts of different types of world music like we are going to see today, which we're super excited about, um, as well as a full uh, children's programming that we have every year, which is now in its fourth season. All of this we've been bringing to you this year virtually, and we cannot wait to see you back in person very soon. So this is our second to last uh, concert of our season. Our season runs until June 30th. The next concert is going to be in June, and it's going to be the premiere of an opera for kids called Cow Goes to the Opera. And it is just the cutest, uh, the cutest uh, program. Uh, we're going to bring a revised version of it to you this season, and the full opera production is going to be given live in person next season. So I'd like to start the portion of this afternoon with a little Q&A with Fred Trumpy, who is the director of Gamelan Ioanni, Ioana Sari, uh, which is a Queens College-based uh, Gamelan group. So, Fred, thank you so much for traveling all this way. Sure, no problem. I thank you for having I'm me. I'm pretty sure you didn't travel very far. Not too you? bad. Yeah. Um, so this is Fred, everyone, and he has brought some really interesting instruments for us today. But first, Fred, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, about Fred the human, Fred the <laughs> sure. musician, um, and then a little bit about your affiliation with CUNY and Queens College? Sure. Yeah, I'm a uh, drummer and percussionist who have been playing for 23 years or so. And I really enjoy playing all aspects of drums and percussion, you know, uh, growing up taking drum set lessons and then later getting a classical degree and then eventually playing an ensemble like this. And being a working musician in New York, you know, you have to kind of put, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, so being able to do different types of ensembles um, really makes it interesting and kind of a necessity in the, in the city. But uh, so I went to Queens College from 2006 to 2010 and learned about gamelan music, uh, just kind of the way most classical musicians do, where you talk about kind of the, its influence on Western music from like Debussy to Satie to later the 20th century composers like John Cage, John Harrison, that whole 50s American composers, later to the minimalist composers um, utilizing, you know, metal instruments, gongs, um, more specifically some of the interlocking patterns you'd see in like Steve Reich. 
Um, and just kind of learning about that and then listening to some gamelan recordings while I was in school there. I had then graduated and about a year or two later, the Queens College had bought a, an entire gamelan ensemble. And luckily, Michael Lipsy, um, who is running the group, uh, allowed the group to not only be students of Queens College, but it was also a community group, which it still is. The group right now consists of students, alumni, and local New York musicians who have a passion for playing a percussion-based ensemble. For me, you know, any drummer or percussionist, when they learn the idea of like a whole orchestra being based around percussion, you just have to kind of dive right into it. Yes, that that must have been some decision to buy a whole set of. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was also listening to you talk about the composers that are influenced by gamelan and. I wrote my dissertation on the music of Georgi Ligeti. Oh, and yeah. And I know he was hev heavily influenced by some of the gamelan music that he heard. Yeah, absolutely. Dealing with like semitones and microtonal music. And polymetric layering. Yeah. And uh, inter interwoven, interlacing patterns. Yep, exactly. Uh, so great. So really looking forward to this myself personally. Um, so for those of us watching, um, some people might not know what a gamelan is, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, gamelan is an Indonesian word that translates to orchestra. So there are many different types of gamelan styles. Uh, we have like the main large ensemble. There are chamber groups that's called uh, gender that typically would accompany shadow puppets. There are uh, vocal groups called kechak, where it's a vocal interlocking idea. Um, so that just translates to to orchestra, and our group, the name Gamelan Yawanasari, roughly translates to the energy that is um, released when a flower blooms, is roughly the translation of Yawanasari. That's beautiful, and it's perfect for today when everything is blooming. Exactly. Um, okay, so you touched upon this a little bit. How exactly did this group wind up forming at Queens College? Like, who's idea was this, um, how long did it take to form this group that to get you guys up to the point of having your first performance? Right, so my, like I was saying, Michael Lipsy, who runs the, the ensemble, uh, was, was reading the paper, uh, I think he tells the story, and they were looking for musicians to play in the Indonesian consulate playing gamelan. So he had obviously being a professor at Queens College at Heard Gamelon, um, wanted to be a part of it, saw this ad, went there, and then eventually he went to Bali, was able to perform with a group called uh, Dharmaswara, a very good New York-based uh, Gamelon, and then uh, when he came back, was able to kind of convince CUNY and Queens College that we need to bring this style of music to Queens College. Great, great. Um, so my next question is, where does the repertoire for the Gamelan Orchestra come from? Meaning, you know, where does the music come from? Um, where do you come up with your programming? Are there standards in the repertoire the way there are in classical music for pianists like myself with the Beethoven sonatas? Um, are there pieces in the Gamelan repertoire which are standards that everyone knows? Um, is there new music always being composed for? So if you can tell us a little bit about the repertoire or the music for the gamelan and where it comes from. Yeah, our program, which you're gonna see, has a mixture of kind of everything that we do. We do play the, the quote unquote standards, the pieces that uh, beginning musicians learn, like some of the welcome pieces, like uh, Pendet Penyam Bhutan, uh, Gabor, and um, we've learned Hujan Mas, a, a bunch of traditional dance pieces, because this music is actually uh, should be accompanied by dancing, uh, a dancer, or one or, or several. And uh, we do play that style of music, the traditional pieces, but we also uh, work with uh, modern composers, whether they're in America or they're in Bali. We're playing a piece by the composer Evan Saporin um, called Tire Fire, which is a five movement work. We're playing just the first movement. Um, and traditionally that piece is supposed to be gamelan and five guitars but we're playing it just the first movement with just the gamelan. Um, and we are also playing 
two pieces by one of our teachers, an amazing Balinese composer called Dewa Alit, who is like on the, the cutting edge of like really pushing the boundaries of, of gamelan music. Um, really, you know, Michael kind of talks to him about him almost like Beethoven, where he's like at the threshold of like the classical into the modern, where he's dealing with all these new forms, new tunings, all of these really interesting polyrhythmic things that you didn't really see in the past. And he, we have some of his older pieces you'll see here that kind of represent that, that change into the new forms. Being called a modern day Beethoven is some high praise. So. Yes, absolutely. And mm. I don't think he, that's hyperbole. I think he is, I you know, there are many different, you. like for me, uh, sorry to cut you off. For me, you know, you read about this music, um, different literature, and you'll see his name come up all the time. And we were fortunate enough in 2018, 2020, to go over there, study with him. He's come to America. We've studied with him here, and he's, it's just a great collaboration we have with him. Again, his name is Dewa Alit, an amazing musician. That must have been an amazing experience as well. Yes. Um, and you touched upon that you perform as well with dancers, and our audience might not know this, but originally when we programmed this pre-COVID, uh, we were going to have Balinese dancers come. So next year, uh, we're hoping that that is actually, that you'll have the dancers Absolutely, still yeah. ready we, to go. We <laughs> have dancers that we work with, and they're, they're amazing dancers, but unfortunately, they couldn't make it here. And our video, um, they weren't able to make it, but next time we come, we'll, we'll make we, that happen. We look forward to that. Yeah. Um, a little bit about your group. So how often does Gamelan Yuan Asari uh, get to rehearse? Um, and where do you rehearse now during some COVID restrictions? I, as, as we all know, musicians know, and trying to program concerts, so many things are closed, and your group needs a large space. Yeah. So um, maybe you could talk a little bit about how, how you've been rehearsing. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about where you guys uh, yeah. uh, recorded the concert, which I find extraordinary. So please so tell us. We would typically rehearse at Queens College uh, for obvious reasons um, under nor normal circumstances, but now we had to kind of be creative in which we would ha get all the instruments to the people so they would have instruments to practice on, of course, and then eventually when it came time to rehearse and play together, we had to get creative with the spaces. So we rehearsed at a few different places, schlepping these in a van to different places we did outside Queens College, and then eventually we had to go uh, to uh, a school that one of the members teaches at in one of their uh, outside pavilions. And then eventually we had to go to Michael Lipsy's backyard to just kind of make all of this happen and kind of be creative. But I think that's everyone during this time is you have to just kind of deal with what you have and make it work. I feel the people at home right now thinking, how would I fit an orchestra in my backyard? <laughs> but actually, it was uh, quite amazing when I when I saw a little bit of the video earlier uh, that you have this available to you, and how wonderful is that? And how wonderful that hopefully your neighbors, <laughs> I, I don't know how my neighbors would feel about it, but hopefully your neighbors really, really enjoyed the, the, yeah. the music. Yeah, they did. I, I think it was good. It was a little risky at first, but they tend to, of course, they seem to enjoy of it. Course. Um, are there any other groups like your group here in New York or in New York City? Yeah, there are. Like I said, there's us. There's a, a great group called uh, Gamelon Dharmaswara. I know, um, I believe uh, NYU and Columbia, they have, some, they have some groups. So it is, and it's becoming more and more popular. Back, you know, 40 years ago, maybe even less than that, there were really only like, there was groups on the West Coast, um, there were, and there weren't too many, but you're starting to see them pop up more. There's um, that composer I mentioned, Evan Zaforin, he has a group up at MIT. There are more, kind of some groups in the Midwest as well. Um, and it's becoming to get more and more popular, um, for sure, than it was, say, 10 years ago. With Queens, where we live, being the most ethnically diverse county in the entire world, it's not surprising that we have oh, yeah. a Gamelon group here, and that's, that's pretty wonderful. We're very fortunate. Um, one last question before I turn it over to you for your demonstration. Sure. So where can we hear your group play? Where can we hear Gamelon Yuanasari? And what are some of your future plans, like immediate plans and 
maybe some later plans coming up? Sure. Um, so I would suggest you to uh, go to our website for future dates. It's gamelonys.com. And we ho we are have some things in the works right now in which we are going to do a similar program of a streaming, hopefully live, um, once all of the restrictions are up. We have a couple of things kind of working out, and then hopefully we're always on our way kind of inching towards going back to Bali and collaborating with our teacher, Dewa Alit, again. So hopefully that's also in the works. That would be lovely. If you need anyone to help carry your luggage, <laughs> I'm available for the Absolutely. trip to Bali. Um, so again, that is gamelonys.com if you want to learn a little more about what the group is doing. And that's G-A-M-E-L-A-N-Y-S.com. Um, so now I'm going to turn the floor over completely to Fred, and he is going to show us some of the beautiful instruments that he brought today and demonstrate how they work and what they sound like. Sure. Thank you. Um, so... I kind of wanted to just demonstrate, kind of just visually, they're obviously very beautiful instruments. And they're all hand carved, and they all, you can see they all have depictions on the front of them. If you could hear me, let me pull this out. So like I said, they're all hand carved instruments on the front with depictions of the Ramayana. And, and most groups have this depiction on them uh, in, you know, the group's desired colors. And I kind of want to go over the kind of the specifics in the tuning and the tuning system and how these instruments work. In the program, we have a demonstration of the specifics of a piece of music, but just kind of the overall idea. When you first listen to this music, it's kind of hard with Western ears to kind of get used to it, specifically for those who may have like perfect pitch. But each ensemble is tuned to itself, the same way maybe an orchestra would tune to the piano you're not really looking for that specific A440. You're trying to really just get the group to be all involved. So each ensemble, each village has its own tuning to itself, um, each relationship. It's very insular. Um, so that's one idea, but also this concept of umpak, which translates to waves. And if you've heard of gamelan, you kind of hear this idea where, to us, it's quote unquote out of tune. Um, if you've tried to tune a specifically maybe a string instrument and you start to hear there are these waves happening and that relationship kind of dies as we get into perfect tuning, us, they want that waves. That kind of is the energy involved in gamelan music. So I could kind of demonstrate that here between these two different instruments. These are two different instruments. They don't have the same relationship, but they're an octave apart. So I could kind of demonstrate this. You start to hear those beatings, and you want that. There's a minimum of a pair per instrument so that you get that relationship. You have the one main instrument and the one tuned slightly out from that. Right, so that is existing throughout the whole group. And uh, so this instrument is called the Chao Lung, and this plays the main melody. And it's kind of in the lower register, and you'll see that in our demonstration. And it's comprised of seven pitches. Right, so that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the general scale we have here. And this instrument deals with that as well um, of different octave ranges. So those seven pitches in this would be and there's an octave higher and there's an octave lower this. So you have these different relationships happening and they're all kind of moving at different rates of speed. You have this main melody that you'll have in this instrument. have these really fast moving rhythms happening in this instrument. So 
So this is very specific to Balinese music. If you've heard other Indonesian styles, like from Java or Sumatra, they have their own style of music, but it's that gamelan is a little bit more meditative, a little bit more quote unquote relaxing, where Balinese music is very loud, aggressive, and fast, which uh, I find to be very fun to play and listen to. They have those, obviously, elements in the music, but overall, a characteristic I would say would be loud, fast. Um, so these are these two instruments. Next we have my favorite instrument, which would be the rayong, which is just a series of pots. Tune pots. You can see that here. And you, they have these buttons on top of them. And you play with these sticks or pongles. And you generally play them on the side. You could play them on the button, and you play different melodic instruments. This would be typically played by two to four people. of the bridge between the melodic instruments and the rhythmic instruments, which would be this category right here, the kendang, which is kind of the unofficial uh, leader of the group, in which they tell the musicians when to go on, when to play louder, when to play softer, when to slow down, play these bursts of information called angsels. And you, again, you'll see that in our demonstration. So I'll play a little bit of this as well. It's a two-sided drum that you play with your hands. And like the other instruments, they could be played solo or in a pair with their own interlocking rhythms. to cut through the, through the whole group so that you could hear some of those cues, which the drummer is, would be following a dancer because sometimes they have to come from the other side of the room or they have to do a specific turn so that they know when to move on in the music. So that's just a kind of general breakdown of these specific instruments. And like I said, the second piece you'll see will be a demonstration of the first piece, which is called Pendet Benyam Bhutan, which is a welcome piece. Well, thank you so much, Fred. That was really, really exciting. And I can't wait to have the whole group here and the dancers next year. Uh, we're looking forward to it. So uh, for everyone at home and on Facebook Live, uh, this ends the portion of our Q&A and demonstration. And I want to take a moment to thank you so much for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. Uh, you can check out Music Originate on our website, which you'll see at the end of the show. On, uh, we put it up there for you. Uh, again, thank you to Fred Trumpy. Thank you to uh, Gamelan Yoana Sari. Thank you to Michael Lipsy. Thank you to Queens College, um, to our board members. To, uh, three of us are actually CUNY professors, uh, Sunny Nabel and David Schober. Thank you guys so much also for facilitating and making uh, this concert happened today. So now for everyone watching at home, uh, if you wait a few moments, we are going to connect to the pre-recorded performance of Gamelan Yoana Sari. Thank you again so much. Enjoy this beautiful day and this beautiful concert and be well.
Pendet Penyam Bhutan. It's just a celebratory dance or a welcome dance, but it was actually commissioned for the airport. When they opened the airport, they commissioned this small piece to welcome the visitors into Bali. Unfortunately, you won't see the dancer because she has a shoulder injury and she couldn't make it today. So we're going to deconstruct the piece just so you can see the way the whole thing works. In most music, you're listening to it from the top down, right? Like in Western music, you're listening to the violins or the singer or the electric guitar, whatever is at the highest point, and everything underneath serves as like an accompaniment. In this, the music is generated from basically the bottom up. So it starts with this one instrument that Ruka and Dylan are playing. They're going to play the Chow Lung. So that's a four note pattern. Georgia plays an abstraction of that, basically like half the tempo of it. And then Connor plays a four note pattern made up of three gongs. And the lowest gong kind of acts as like if you're looking at a grandfather clock as the clock face. And these are all the smaller cogs going at different speeds, different sizes. The low gong acts as the downbeat. One, two, we're going to add Caitlin. She's going to play the ka jar, which is keeping the beat for us nice and quiet. Now, if you notice while they're playing, they have one hand with one stick, and the other hand, they're holding on to the bars. That is because when you hit the thing, it rings so much, you have to dampen every single note when you play. But the problem is trying to play quickly you can't play quickly with one hand. So they divide all the parts into two parts, and it's called a kotekon. So the first thing we're gonna hear, it's the polos, which is the primary, and the sanksi, which is the secondary. So first we're gonna hear the polos. Then we're gonna hear the sanksi part. Notice those gaps in there. Dum da dum da dum dum da dum da dum. When you put them together, it's circular. The next thing we're going to add is the rayong, which Freddie's playing. And we're gonna add a little instrument called the Chang Chang. And then I'm gonna play the drums, which acts as a cue to tell everybody when to go on, when to get louder, when to play softer.